Let us now explain the origin, cause, and nature of the Milky Way. And here too, let us begin by discussing the statements of others on the subject. 1. Of the so-called Pythagoreans, some say that this is the path of one of the stars that fell from heaven at the time of Phaeton's downfall. Others say that the sun used once to move in this circle and that this region was scorched or met with some other affection of this kind because of the sun and its motion. But it is absurd then to see that if this were the reason the circle of the zodiac ought to be affected in the same way, and indeed more so than that of the Milky Way, since not the sun only, but all the planets move in it. We can see the whole of the circle, half of it being visible at any time of the night, but it shows no signs of any such affection except where a part of it touches the circle of the Milky Way. 2. Anaxagoras, Democritus, and their schools say that the Milky Way is the light of certain stars. For, they say, when the sun passes below the earth, some of the stars are hidden from it. Now the light of those in which the sun shines is invisible, being obscured by the light of the sun. But the Milky Way is the peculiar light of those stars which are shaded by the earth from the sun's rays. This, too, is obviously impossible. The Milky Way is always unchanged and among the same constellations, for it is clearly a greatest circle. Whereas, since the sun does not remain in the same place, what is hidden from it differs at different times. Consequently, with the change of the sun's position, the Milky Way ought to change its position too. But we find that this does not happen. Besides, if astronomical demonstrations are correct, and the size of the sun is greater than that of the earth, and the distance of the stars from the earth many times greater than, than that of the sun, just as the sun is further from the earth than the moon, then the cone made by the rays of the sun would terminate at no great distance from the earth, and the shadow of the earth, what we call night, would not reach the stars. On the contrary, the sun shines on all the stars, and the earth screens none of them. 3. There is a third theory about the Milky Way. Some say that it is a reflection of our sight to the sun, just as they say that the comet is. But this too is impossible, for if the eye in the mirror and the whole of the object were severally at rest, then the same part of the image would appear at the same point in the mirror. But if the mirror and the object move, keeping the same distance from the eye which is at rest, but at different rates of speed and so not always at the same interval from one another, then it is impossible for the same image always to appear in the same part of the mirror. Now the constellations included in the circle of the Milky Way move, and so does the sun, the object to which our sight is reflected, but we stand still. And the distance of those two from us is constant and uniform, but their distance from one another varies. For the dolphin sometimes rises at midnight, sometimes in the morning. But in each case, the same parts of the Milky Way are found near it. But if it were a reflection and not a genuine affection of these, this ought not to be the case. Again, we can see the Milky Way reflected at night in water and similar mirrors. But under these circumstances, it is impossible for our sight to be re reflected in the sun, to the sun. These considerations show that the Milky Way is not the path of one of the planets, nor the light of imperceptible stars, nor a re reflection. And those are the chief theories handed down by others hitherto. Let us recall our fundamental principle and then explain our views. We have already laid down that the outermost part of what is called the air is potentially fire, and that therefore when the air is dissolved by motion, there is separated off a kind of matter, and of this matter we assert that comets consist. We must suppose that what happens is the same as in the case of the comets, when the matter does not form independently, but is formed by one of the, of the fixed stars or the planets. Then these stars appear to be fringed, because matter of this kind follows their course. In the same way, a certain kind of matter follows the sun, and we explain the halo as a reflection from it when the air is of the right constitution. Now, we must assume that what happens in the case of the stars severally happens in the case of the whole of the heavens and all the upper motion. For it is natural to suppose that, if the motion of a single star excites a flame, that of all the stars should have a similar result, and especially in that region in which the stars are biggest and most numerous and nearest to one another. Now the circle of the zodiac dissolves this kind of matter because of the motion of the sun and the planets, and for this reason most comets are found outside the tropic circles. Again, no fringe appears around the sun or moon, for they dissolve such matter too quickly to admit of its formation. 
But this circle in which the Milky Way appears to our sight is the greatest circle, and its position is such that it extends far outside the tropic circles. Besides, the region is full of the biggest and brightest constellations, and also of what are called scattered stars. You are willing to look to see this clearly. So for these reasons, all this matter is continually and ceaselessly collecting there. A proof of a theory is this. In the circle itself, the light is stronger in that half where the Milky Way is divided, and in it the constellations are more numerous and closer to one another than in the other half, which shows that the cause of the light is the motion of the constellations and nothing else. For if it is found in the circle in which there are most constellations, and at that point in the circle at which they are densest and contain the biggest and the most stars, it is natural to suppose that they are the true cause of the affection in question. The circle and the constellations in it may be seen in the diagram. The so-called scattered stars, it is not possible to set down in the same way on the sphere because none of them have an evident permanent position. But if you look up to the sky, the point is clear. For in this circle alone are the intervals full of these stars. In the other circles, there are obvious gaps. Hence, if we accept the cause assigned for the appearance of comets as plausible, we must assume that the same kind of thing holds good of the Milky Way. For the fringe, which in the former case is an affection of a single star, here forms in the same way in relation to a whole circle. So if we are to define the Milky Way, we may call it a fringe attaching to the greatest circle and due to the matter secreted. This, as we said before, explains why there are few comets and why they appear rarely. It is because at each revolution of the heavens, this matter has always been and is always being separated off and gathered into this region. We have now explained the phenomena that occur in that part of the terrestrial world which is continuous with the motions of the heavens, namely shooting stars and the burning flame, comets, and the Milky Way, these being the chief affections that appear in that region.